It's Thursday night, we're live. Caleb's here with us, Lone Star Medics out of Texas, Schwell's in the house, so is Eric, Q, Ross, and Casey are all on the fly, we'll see if they end up showing up, what's up everybody, welcome to another episode of Gun News Weekly, it's Thursday night, it's just after 9pm, appreciate you tuning in, appreciate you supporting our sponsors along the way, make sure you check out Keybar and the guys over at Green Force Tactical, you know who we haven't talked about in a while, Schwell, and I think it's because I'm so clean cut. But they creep up on you. Is that uh, dirty pirate hooker from from our friends at Viking Spit? You want to speak on Viking Spit for ten seconds? Cause it's been a while. I just put some in right before the show, cause that's how I get the you know whole shiny thing, and everybody comments on how good my beard looks. And um, yeah, it also makes it very soft, according to my doctor. He likes to play in my beard when I go visit him. Eric, you like to play with his beard. What's up, Eric? How you doing? Hey, what's going on? I'm follically challenged, and and Chwell's beard is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Challenge. That's a new one for me. That's good. Though. I like it. I think we should and, uh, make a match. Scrabble. Challenge. Checking in from Lone Star Medics out of Texas. Go check out LoneStarMedics.com. It's Caleb Causey. What's up, Caleb? Hey, guys. How are you guys doing today? You look like a Viking Spit candidate. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to yeah, give I'll you a referral. Yeah, check that out, man. I mean, the beard needs some, some love. I'm not going to lie. The beard needs some love. Dirty pirate hooker will change your life. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> You're checking in with us tonight. We do appreciate it. Uh, obviously, we want to talk to you a little bit about your business and what you got going on there. But since you're um, since you're in the medic world, and since all of the main stories, we're going to cover three big ones and, and a couple flyers here tonight. Um, since they all kind of have something where medical could apply, we encourage you to jump in on on the on the, the discussion. But but most important, at the end of each, we're just going to make sure we check back in with you and and talk something medical, if that makes sure. sense. Sure. Cool. Sure. Uh, real quick before we get started, tell everybody who you are and, and where where uh, where they can find you online, but also um, what what are your credentials? What makes you a medic? Uh, that's that's a, the the short version. Okay, uh, basically I've been a medic involved with field or tactical medicine for about the past fifteen or a little more than fifteen years. Uh, as I keep wanting to hesitate and say it's only fifteen years, but my wife's quick to point out that no, you're getting older every year. But uh, I've been a medic involved with, with field or tactical medicine for about 15 plus years. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, very much a student before I'm a teacher of anything. Uh, you know, I try to learn more from my students and actually teach them. I know that's kind of philosophical and heady right now. But, um, you know, I started out uh, riding out with the Boy Scouts of America with Explorer program out of Fort Worth with uh, MedStar, the ambulance company there. And uh, went to the, after high school. Uh, ended up in the Army, did four years of active duty as a combat medic, uh, deployed a couple times to the, the Balkans, places like Albania and Kosovo, Macedonia. Uh, then ended my, my career uh, in Louisiana with the uh, with Opposing Forces Unit. Uh, so we got to play a really, really good bad guy against the good guys. Um, so that was interesting. Yeah. A lot of fun, a lot of good work there. Got, on, uh, got out of the Army, got onto the fire department, spent about uh, ooh, five or six years there. As a volunteer firefighter EMT, was on the SWAT team during that time as well. Uh, worked for a few, uh, whatever they're called this week, private military corporation or firms. Um, but mainly just stateside work, nothing really to the right home about, nothing too exciting. Uh, but then about seven years ago, I uh, went down to College Station to go to paramedic school. And they were, made it through paramedic school by the skin of my teeth. Uh, so, so much that they said, hey, you'd be a really good instructor. And I said, no, nah, I don't need to be an instructor. Um, I, I don't. <laughs> I just learned this. And uh, they said, no, no, you'll start the basic level. So uh, the after paramedic school, they sent me to a bunch of uh, the advanced classes, right? Where <laughs> I said, you guys got that backwards. The advanced classes where you learn how to learn and how to teach. That should be your first course you take. <laughs> um, but right. uh, yeah, came back and uh, some buddies at the shooting range at Attack Pro Shooting Center, uh, where I was an RSO. They said. Uh, Hey, well, now that you're a big shot instructor, why don't you teach us some stuff? I pulled an eight-hour class uh, out of my hat, 
uh, teaching my buddies, you know, the other ROs, and uh, here we are seven years later. Uh, you know, I've been very, very fortunate. So you have on your website, it's 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 incredibly phenomenal what someone can learn from you. Um, from not it's not just basic 101 and a little bit more advanced, and you have an incredible list of things here. Um, that people can choose from. I'm assuming. I'm assuming you have people that try to get through the whole, the whole, the whole gamut. But you obviously have it, have it together. There's no two ways about it. See, that's why I don't sure. grill you in the show because listening to you rattle off all that stuff to me, it's it's quite impressive. It's great to have you on board with us. You definitely uh, probably have seen some things and and kind of been there, done that when it comes to some of the stuff we're going to talk about tonight. Um, sure, sure. So the, all right, let's get to the main stuff of the night. Um, well, you and I talked a little bit about this today, but not too much. Let's go over what's going on around the country. There's two big shootings that people are talking about, two other shootings that people really aren't talking about. Um, let's start in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, two nights ago now, uh, most people have seen the cell phone footage. If you haven't, go Google it unless you guys want to analyze it uh, as we talk about it. But basically, you had a, you had a gentleman uh, named Mr. Sterling, Alton Sterling, Call him a gentleman once again. Well, we talked about that. The gentleman, Alton Sterling, was outside of the um, convenience store selling CDs as he did for many, many years, apparently. And there was a call. He called into the police. Um, allegedly, he got into an altercation with a homeless man, flashed the fact that he had a gun on him. Police were called. They showed up. We don't know what happened from the time the police pulled in until the time this video starts. And the videos have come from a couple different sources, but basically they're the video where the man has been tased, tackled, mounted. Then comes the discussion. Um, he's got a gun, he's got a gun, gets screamed out, and all of a sudden this guy takes five rounds, bleeds out on the scene, and uh, has passed away. Whew. A couple things that stuck out in my mind on this one. Um, first and foremost, it's a two-on-one situation. I can't wait. I really am interested in seeing what happened before this man was tased, because you have two officers that are big, imposing guys against one guy who's outside selling CDs. If they come up on the premise that he's got a gun, I want to know what they did, what actions they took prior to the tasing of him. I want to know what the conversation was, and that's just not there. The Even other part is, go ahead. Now go ahead. Now go ahead, Kevin. Uh, well, again, this is just I, I'm trying to get all mine out because I know you guys have big opinions on this stuff, and I want to hear what everyone has to say. Um, again, the, the paramedics pronounced him dead on the scene. He was definitely shot right in the chest. I mean, I don't I don't know what could have been done to be honest. Um, the reason they're saying they shot him is because he was going for a gun, going for a gun. Now, he did not have a gun in his hands once the officer rolled off of him. The other officer then, once he was dead, walked over, took the gun out of his pocket. Shwell, you start off, man. What, what do you think about this whole thing? This is a, this is a, a multifaceted story, but what are, you, what are your initial thoughts on it? My initial thoughts, as with any time one of these shootings happen, um, are, here we go again, and um, I'm the black man on the panel. You know, I'm the, the the elephant in the room, and I usually try and keep my emotions under control when we address these kinds of stories. And I don't hide how I feel about them. I just I like to be educated, and I like to present it in a very uh, factual way, where I have all of the information that I need before I come up with my opinion. But based on the video alone, and I know you you have identified that there are a lot of holes and a lot of things that are unexplained at this point. Based on the video alone. An investigation, a thorough investigation needs to be done, and we need to figure out why this happened. Just, you know, one of the, the number one things that happens when these things happen, the the deceased criminal record or their past is brought up immediately. It's one of the first things that you hear the media talk about. The pictures that they present of the deceased are usually mug shots if there is a criminal history. And um, I think the same thing needs to happen with the officers as well. If you're going to do that with the deceased, we need to do that with the officers. And I know that doesn't I think fit the late breaking news about one of the officers. Did you hear about his 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 family's History? background? Yes, I, yeah. I've seen some of that stuff, but I wasn't able to verify it before the show tonight. So you know, for now, it's a it's a non-factor. But uh, I can't I cannot 
just ignore it and say, you know what, there's something that's been going on on Facebook or social media that we've been seeing all day, all week is um, comply, don't die. And when you really break that down and, and think about what that is being said, is that, isn't that, that to me just, just screams, accept oppression, it'll be okay. It, this is this is a, again this that's an interesting place to start it. Um, man, it's it's a tough one, you know, because I'm watching the same thing you are, and like I said, I like to check out different sources. I went and listened to the 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 black radio station out of New York this morning that had happened. Had, the guy ended up being on CNN later in the day, but they were having a very heated discussion, and I I caught this small clip of it, and then I went went and watched the whole thing. Um, Perspective is all in the eye of the beholder, and this is a very divisive. If you're already over here and you think cops are bad, boom, those were bad cops and they killed that guy. If you're over here and you think all cops are good and all bad guys are shitty and that guy was definitely going to shoot him, boom, jury's out on your side. All these people in the middle are trying to figure it out. But the other thing I, I mentioned, I think earlier in the day we were talking about, this media is pushing it like. Big time. The mainstream media, the engine, the push of the divide is shocking right now to me. It's because it's a 24-hour news cycle. You have to talk about something. And to keep content flowing, to keep people talking heads on cable, and it, you gotta you got to keep it going because then it, it goes away and they don't get ratings at the end of the day. It's what what do they have to talk about? You know, they're, they're trying to keep that story alive to... To move forward, just to keep the keep the airways open. Well, now um, they've got you know again as we speak, the gatherings of, of of peaceful protests are going on in cities all around America, not just where these things happen. It's not just like when something happened in Baltimore is a Baltimore protest. These every city that seemed to have had something happen recently, they're having protests. As I said, the problem with protests is eventually the protesters end up face to face with the people that they're angry at in this contest, and that's not a good situation. In most cases, uh, all it takes is one knucklehead on either side, and and you're going to have issues. And I and I I hope that it's a peaceful night, and I hope that um, it's not what we think it's going to be. But we all know, as you said to me earlier, Swell, I have the evidence, and it looks like this shit's probably going to happen. Um, the other question I have, just for the panel, since it's a gun, it's a gun question. Can you shoot your gun from your pocket if it's a certain kind of gun? Eric? I would assume if it's a, a small 38 type of style, I'm guessing a revolver, if it's in your pocket, I'm sure you could. You might hurt yourself in the process, but I'm sure you can shoot through your pocket. Both with your hand in your pocket on the gun, what about from the outside? Because we, we all talked about this video we watched earlier on Facebook where this guy was showing that he felt you could do both. I bet you could if you could get your finger in, into the trigger because you know the if it's in your pocket that means there's no holster around it right so as long as you can actuate the trigger you can get a round off yeah for some reason um, for some reason a lot of these a lot of these shootings where they find these there's no holster involved I don't know if that's just me but a lot of these shootings that I see that are like this there's just never a holster. Um, Caleb, I, I understand that in the medical community there's a, a, a discussion going on about this very case uh, in terms of what should have been done once the guy had been shot. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't think it's such a discussion right now, obviously, because it's very, it's recent and everybody's trying to you know scramble for the facts and the whole you know investigation and everything. Uh, but for some quite some time now, for the past I don't know three to four years at least, uh, there's been a growing, I guess, need for law enforcement, or not need, but uh, issue of law enforcement saying, hey, yeah, we, we've got to be trained up in some medical you know, aspect, whether it's self-aid, buddy aid type stuff, um, to take care of the officer themselves, or you know, their, themselves, or a fellow officer, maybe in bystanders, um, or, you know, a de big debate is, or discussion is, hey, what do we do about uh, after an officer-involved shooting? Uh, when is the when and how do we render aid to that uh, suspect now or to that person that would that they've been involved with the shooting, you know the person that's been shot. 
Um, right. If they know. were just trying to stop them, they weren't necessarily trying to kill anybody, but they had Correct. to shoot them. On, but can they can they now turn the tank, turn it and, and try to save a life? Sure, sure. I mean, that, and that's from my personal belief is I'm not a police officer. I'll d- disclose that. Uh, but having a lot of friends that are police officers and uh, working with them, uh, it's how do I word it? They're, 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 they're not police officers because they want to go out and they want to hurt people. Uh, people in public safety, they're there because they want to help other people. Okay? And uh, we understand that. I mean, you guys get that. And so, yeah, bad things happen, and uh, nobody ever wants to just go around shooting people. And there are bad apples. Sure, absolutely. There's bad apples in every group. But uh, even then, after the shooting, okay, and our after, you know, maybe it's not even shooting. Maybe it's uh, some other type of use of force. You know, do, should we render aid? Hey, their arm got broke or something in the scuffle or something. Should we splint it or what do we do? Or we wait for fire department? Is it safe for the fire EMS to come in here and check it out? Um, or what do we do they, until that time? They, they, wait. They, they usually wait until EMS is notified and, and that there's been an issue and they, they join the... Uh, usually, the, depends on the department, obviously, but most uh, agencies, fire and EMS agencies, uh, they'll stage. They may be notified like, hey, there's a officer-involved shooting or shooting some, something going down. Uh, stage down the block here a couple blocks away. Or, you know, like, okay, yeah, we're aware of it. We know where it's at. Um, when wait till the police department gets on the radio and says, hey, yeah, it's, everything's safe now. You guys can come in here and, you know, and help out. There's, there's wounded. In the case where that guy got shot, in, in, according to as much of the video that you've seen, do you think anything could have been done to save him based on what you've seen? I, I don't know. Uh, like, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm still wanting to hear the facts. Want to uh, see some more video like I do. I mean, I... Yeah, like, I want to hear, I want to, you know, I... I Trust the investigators to do to do their job and find out. Hey, wh- here's what happened. Uh, oftentimes, when there's people shot, that's one thing that's difficult to track is where people on their bodies are shot. Uh, that's uh, becoming a that's a pretty violent or not violent uh, vital piece of information for guys like myself or other people saying, okay, well, where if I'm a civilian involved in a shooting, where are civilians getting shot, innocents get innocent bystanders getting shot or uh, you know, the good guy's getting shot, or where police officers getting shot. Uh, FBI and CDC keep stats on some of that, but not always. Um, gotcha. It's not that detailed yet. So I don't, I don't have an answer for you, to be honest. Understood. Understood. Fair enough. And, and that was kind of um, something I wanted to mention is, first the one video came out, the first video, and an opinion was formed because it's a pretty graphic video. Guy gets taken down. Next thing you know, there's a couple guys on top of him wrestling trying to put cuffs on him. Next thing you know, gun goes off. You don't see that every day. Excuse me. Then the second video came out, and that changed your overall perception of what happened because now you have a different view that you can now add to that. Let's not forget that there's other views. There's the body cameras. Who knows? They say they fell off. Hopefully they fell off and were aimed at the action or could pick up the audio or whatever. We know that there's another video that was taken from the convenience store that has yet to be seen or shown. So I think once all of that is out there, now you have enough video evidence that you can kind of and audio that we can all kind of draw some real conclusions on it. Um, any other thoughts on it from anyone? I'm just curious, and I'm sure it's department by department. But once a suspect is shot, it goes back to the question of do you render aid or do you wait until the person is you know in handcuffs or the scene is secured, you know, what's what's that process like? Um, how, I think it was, what, four or five shots in this case or something like that? You know, what what's the next steps? Okay, so you shot the individual. Do you now render aid until EMS arrives? Because they're not on scene at the same time the police are. Or do you wait until EMS arrives? I think this is going to get into this second story quite a bit as well, Eric, that, that exact question. That exact question. Shwell, anything else on that one before we switch gears? No, sir. All right. So the, the other story, the big one that came out today, which is, again, brutal, and, and I, I mean, maybe we can just kind of show the set the scene of it, of, of what happened, but we've been dinking around with Facebook. Um, I've been dinking around with the Facebook video in the morning, doing some stuff out by the pool, talking about products, talking about different stuff we're going to do on the live shows. And I think it was Eric this morning that hit us with this link and said, man, such a shitty thing to see first thing in the morning, but um, there was a... A Minnesota couple pulled over for a taillight violation, and the next thing you know, uh, this woman went live on Facebook and 
Let's, uh, I'm going to just kind of jump around because this is the full video with uh, like nine minutes or something like that. Let me um, – and it is graphic, so anybody that's got anyone watching, you know, that, that shouldn't be or is sensitive to this type of thing, please let them know that they need to get out the room real quick and come back. Um, but long story short, there's a woman in the car. Her, her boyfriend has been shot in the arm several times apparently, and she kind of tells the story from the start. There also is a child in the back seat. Tail light in the back, and the police just he's 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 covered. He he's killed my boyfriend. He's licensed. He's carried. To, he's licensed to carry. He was trying to get out his ID and his wallet out his um pocket, and he let the officer know that he was re he had a firearm and he was reaching for his wallet, and the officer just shot him in his arm. We're waiting for a back. I will, sir. No worries. I will. He just shot his arm off. We got pulled oh. over on Larpener. I told him not to reach for him. I told him to get his hand open. He had, you told him to get his ID, sir, and his driver's license. Oh, my God. Please don't tell me he's dead. Please don't. It's actually a good spot to pause it. Um, it goes on to have uh, her go outside and get put into the police car where there she, she then goes from being completely calm. She does flip out a little bit, and the daughter then consoles her. Um, and, 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 and that daughter is four years old, too, so it, it's it, it's got a lot going on. It's a crazy story. Um the fact that it was live on Facebook is is un unbelievable. And I think once again we're going to see more and more crazy things live on some of these applications where all you have to do is tap a couple buttons. Swell, I think it was you that mentioned to me earlier. She must have, when they first pulled her over, gotten the phone out and prepped it up a little bit because it does take more than just a quick swipe to get that thing up and running on a, on a Facebook chat. Yeah, I honestly think that that process had already started and then the exchange happened and it may have slowed things down, and that's why we got the video after the shooting had already occurred. Um, again, another wake up in the morning, and here we are with another one. And it's like, wow. All right, guys. What the hell is going on? It is. And now, um, I think th this guy... It, okay, let, let's talk about the medical side of things. So this guy's been shot in the arm, and the cop is still standing outside holding them at bay. Once again, we're not cops. We don't claim to be cops or lawyers or, or medical professionals. I don't. Um, but to me, that just seems way off. You knew you made a mistake. You've then confirmed it that you've made a mistake. And still what you're doing is holding them at bay. The reports are, and I didn't get a chance to confirm this, so somebody tell me if this, if they, this has been changed at all, was that uh, the officer was treated by EMS for shock and freaking out before they even touch the guy in the car. I've heard that from one news source, but I want to verify that. So I've heard it from one news source this evening. It was a witness that said this. It wasn't the girl involved, and it wasn't. It was somebody that was watching this situation. So I'd like to put that still in the yet to be verified category, um, yeah. just because I'd like at least one other source to verify that. Um, a couple things that, that really blow my mind on this one is, A, her calmness as she's talking to the officer as someone she, as her boyfriend's been shot and and dying in front of her and her child. Um, and I guess the first thing I thought of this morning was, where's the, you know, is first aid going to be rendered on this person? Um I'm, she may not know it, so I would I would assume that the officer would be rendering first aid. But then again, She'd I don't. Be in if she tried to get, to render aid and help, I would think so. I, I think at that point she should not be. I'm surprised that they let her continue to film it, uh, on some level. Um, for the record, there was other people that were confused about this. It was when you do a Facebook video for whatever they flip it unless you change the camera. If you're yes. if you change the camera so that you're looking at yourself. They flipped the video. So they weren't in Europe. This was in Minnesota. It's just that he looked like he was on the passenger side. That's people have been asking that question today. Yeah, they flip it. It's it's like it's like a negative image. Yeah. Uh, um, it, horrific thing to see on, on on the internet. That was the other aspect of this that's kind of shocking to me. Um, Ten years ago, if you had seen two murders like the videos that uh, we chose not to show and this one tonight, 
Uh, and you've seen both of those as a, as a teenage kid in America in a city, as a black youth in America today. I, I would think that this would be changing your outlook on a lot of things. And I think that that's what a lot of parents are dealing with right now tonight. Let me let me cover something real quick in the, the chat that just came up. And maybe this will answer a question for you guys that because it was part of what you just mentioned a second ago. Her boyfriend was just shot for making movements toward his wallet after telling law enforcement that he had a gun. Why was she recording live or going live on Facebook? We won't know. Why wasn't she rendering first aid? Well, he has identified he had a gun on his person. Do you think the law enforcement officer is going to allow her to render first aid on a body with someone who has a gun? He just shot her boyfriend. Let's be realistic here. The officer is not going to let her touch him where she can retrieve the gun and actually take revenge on the officer. Use your brains and think things through before you start rambling on and asking dumb questions. And I'm, I'm saying it, it is a dumb question. He is not going to allow her to render first aid and do anything with that body while that man still has that gun on his person. To answer that question, we can go forward from there. Of course. See, that's my point. I was saying she's something's going to happen if she goes to do anything. Right. No, no, that wasn't toward – that was toward the questioning in the chat. Okay. Oh, the there, chat people the, are acting up? Yeah, let them have it. They're asking questions. We'll lay down the law. <clears throat> understood. Uh, understood. I'm glad they're interacting. It's good to have everybody uh, checking us out tonight. Thank you very much for, for jumping in. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, she, he probably would he probably would have gone back to 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 save life uh, to his his trigger mode. I mean, he honestly probably would have if he had seen a bunch of action or fear, flurry in the car of her trying it, to do something. It was. I mean, we we talk about her calmness and stillness. Compare that to the officer's voice. Um, I'm not there. Ooh. I don't know. But you compare the two, and I guess um, uh, law enforcement has a hard job, and I don't want to knock anything that law enforcement. It's a okay. It's a it's a it's a hard discussion to have, but you have to talk about de-escalation. What are the steps before you go to the firearm? Is my guess. But um, first aid, you know, could there have been a, what was the escalation path to get to where he pulled the firearm out? And, and used it, you know. Something um, had to have happened. You know, he... Something happened. I mean... He's, according to the video, and we don't know what happened before she started uh, the, the feed, he said I'm a... I'm a or they, they said he is a CCW holder. Um, I've heard they said they told him it was in the glove box. He was went to retrieve it, and that's when he was shot. Um, I don't know if they have body cameras in Minnesota, so we'll see what happens. This may be the only video that we see of this incident. I heard there's a there's there's like a dashboard possible dashboard cam, but that's it. That's what I heard, but I, I can't. Um, and, and I guess you know, I guess from I guess to to get Caleb involved, you know. I don't know if, besides, like, we've talked about protocols and, and maybe departmental policies, which is boring stuff, but um, from a law, I don't know if you have any discussions with, with law enforcement people that attend your classes, but is there ever any kind of, like, discussion about do you render aid to someone that you shot after the fact? Is that a discussion? There's discussion. I mean, even, you know, uh, you know, uh, folks with their CCWs that ask, you know, and I, of course, I'm no lawyer. I don't want to give any legal advice. Uh, but as far as you got to think, even if you are going to render aid, no matter who you are, even from a uh, you know civilian point of view, uh, to put it, you know, um, your safety is paramount. Uh, am I going to, you know, if I'm involved in, in that, you know, in not this situation, but some situation where I've got to shoot to stop a threat? Well, then, okay. Am I going to start rendering? No, I'm not going to go and put hands on that person. There's still a danger. There's still a threat. Um, if they're conscious, unconscious, whatever this case may be, and uh, even in that officer, I'm not going to try to quarterback here for the officers for law enforcement by any means. Um, you know, it's uh, there. The answer question. There is a discussion about it, but obviously, hey, we've got to think safety first. You know, whatever their procedure is after they involved the shooting, whether they you know, uh, handcuff them. I don't know the correct terminology, terminology, but to handcuff them, secure that suspect or that person, individual. Uh, they search them. I assume they search them for any other 
weapons or anything that could be used as a weapon. And then from then, or there may be a couple other steps that they do to, to properly secure that person, so that way it's safe to render aid. Um, so whether you're law enforcement, a CCW, uh, you know, armed citizen, then you've got to think, is it safe for, for me to render aid? You know, and that goes back to EMT and paramedic school 101. Is the scene safe for us to be here rendering aid? And if it's not, then we need to leave. Well, if the suspect is potentially still a threat or the other people in the vehicle are still a potential threat, then yeah, the, I'm, I'm not worried about rendering aid yet. I'm worried about rendering this whole area safe. Understood. <sighs> well, for those, you, for those of you that are not on the gun channel's chat, um, the question was was raised as to why he told the officer that he was carrying concealed. In in the state of Minnesota, it is a must inform on initial contact state. That is part of the CCW laws in Minnesota. So he did what he was supposed to do. Uh, whether it went down the way that she's reporting it, it remains to be seen. And uh, hopefully we can find out a lot of that information. Uh, and some people won't wait for that information, as, we, have we, as we've seen in the past. Things are going to be ugly, and I guess we just have to hold tight and see how it unfolds. Correct. Yeah, later, um, later uh, This afternoon, the, the governor of Minnesota came out and spoke about the situation and, and what his feelings were. We're, uh, we're not going to go into that because those are his feelings. But a question was asked after his press conference about as a CCW holder, would his information appear when they ran the car's tags or when they ran his license? And the answer is no, because that's private information. So um, that's, I think, also going to be a discussion is, as a CCW holder, how do you that, interact with law enforcement? Yeah, that's state by state too, isn't it? I'm sure it is. Yes. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's weird. I think it's a great weird. video, Swell, uh, upcoming for us uh, when we're over at the, the training center next week would be to have a, a real discussion with my friend uh, over there about what my protocol is, what your protocol is, and then let him know where our holes are or what we're doing right, wrong, uh, correct. I think that would be a great uh, a great video to do. I know what I'm going to do. Agree. Um, it might be, again, might be the same as what you do. It might be slightly different. We don't know. Don't you take a puff? Off of the marijuana and blow it in the officer's face, and then like, hey, bro, I'm I'm high and I have a bunch of guns in the car. Isn't that how you do it? <laughs> and then he, and then he hits the trunk button, right? Right. Man. <laughs> Don't I um, know you? All right. So it, it's going to be an interesting conversation for CCW yeah. holders as well, because every state's different. In Minnesota, sheriffs issue the CCWs as well, so well, it, it's going to be interesting. Anybody that's out there that's got opinions on this stuff, you know, if you if you hate the cops and, and, and you're out there angry about the, the fact that this is stuff is going down, take a look at the other side. If you're on the other side and um, you think it's nothing but bad people out there and they got what they deserved, what did it, take a look at the other side as well. We'll, we'll just put it that way um, and hope that everybody's, again, safe out there this weekend. It, there's no reason to get all in a huff and puff over this uh, beyond doing a peaceful protest. Um, we'll, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens. Um, half past the hour and just a little bit more beyond that. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. Once again, check out Green Force Tactical for your Kydex holsters. Check out Keybar when you get a chance. They got some cool new Keybars. If you don't follow Keybar on like Instagram or Facebook, you're missing out. Uh, those guys do it up and they keep they keep pushing forward. They put out a a new Cryptek one that matches one of my holsters. Now I got to get a Cryptek Keybar. This is how it rolls. Check out Grizzly Targets. We got some things coming up with them very soon. And um, Lanzang Tactical. Make sure you check out the video I dropped today with the guys from Lanzang, including Q doing their long range course. And I got a sweet little 308 barrel up there that we're going to be uh, doing something with somebody. One of our viewers is going to get that very, very soon. Um, yeah, before we get into the other stories, let's also talk about some other things that are going on. G Webs has got something going on. Well, I had that email up somewhere. Uh, which, what has he got going on? He's got. Go over to oh I dropped the link in the in the in the uh, in the blog. Go to gunnewsweekly.com. Look under this video. Click on the link. Go check out what G Webs is doing over there with gun channels. Support the effort if you can. Did I cover that well? Is that about right? He's doing a gun show loophole tour. He's going to be stopping in some of your major cities or some of your favorite cities, not major, but favorite cities, going to gun shows, going to gun stores and things like that. So uh, get out there and try and support him. We want to see this happen. 
I would love to see this happen. All right, so we're going to shift gears. Once again, uh, if you're watching this, please push this out on Facebook, all, the, all that other kind of stuff with your friends. Let them know you're watching. It's great to have you on board. Um, and we do have some great guests coming up in the coming weeks as well. Um, and to reset, our guest tonight is Caleb Causey from LoneStarMedics.com. So, Caleb, thanks again for jumping on with us. We do appreciate it, bro. Sure, sure. This next one's a heartbreaker, um, but it's a story that we want to cover. Um, let, let's watch this video because they do a pretty good summation of it. Uh, this happened in Sarasota. Moments before his death. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ashley Glass and for Jameson. And I'm Wendy Ryan. Thanks for joining us. The brother of a 14-year-old boy killed in a Sarasota gun range accident speaking out tonight. David Brumby was there yesterday afternoon when his dad accidentally shot and killed his little brother. ABC Action News reporter Karen Moshek has been following this story since it broke. She joins us now live from Sarasota with how the family is coping with this horrible tragedy. Kara? Of course, such an incredibly sad situation for everyone involved. And this is a family that was well-trained. They knew the ins and outs of gun safety and how to handle weapons. But in a split second, something here went wrong. And that cost this 14-year-old Stephen Brumby his life. David Brumby is trying to stay strong after seeing a bullet hit his 14-year-old little brother, Stephen. No matter how calm you try and stay, there's no way to wipe the, um, the images away from the mind of your little brother bleeding out in your arms. David is one of seven children. He says the gun range has always been a family place where his dad Clayton could spend quality time with the kids. That's why he took us to the range yesterday. We've been there so many times before and he wanted to, um, to train us on how to, um, to protect our family, to be loving and kind to everybody, but to be able to protect it if if something happens. The shop's owners say the Brumbies are all skilled shooters and leading up to the accident they took every safety measure. And evidently there's a freak breakdown in the personal safety side of owning and operating a firearm that should have never have happened. While Clayton was shooting a casing ricocheted off the sidewall and went into his shirt he tried to brush off the hot shell and the gun discharged. That bullet hit the ceiling ricocheting back down Hitting Stephen. I can't think of anything worse. This family is trying to focus on their faith and the fond memories they have of Stephen. Just the most outgoing, um, gregarious, friendly, loving person that um, you'd ever know. It's a shame. That was a tough one to report on, and it hits home in so many different ways. Um, you know, the whole tactic thing was started by me wanting to make sure that my girls, exactly as as they said, uh, were were well skilled enough to understand that um, there's no need to use a, a weapon as an offensive weapon. But if you need to use it to defend yourself, you need to be proficient and you need to know how. And um, this this story just it sucks, um, but it's something we can all learn from. I think so. I wanted to cover it. Um, well, we've seen this this gun range before, correct? You know, I couldn't pin, I can't pin pin it down. Why I know of it, I do know that they are advertised as one of the safest ranges in the world, or at least that's what they call themselves. So, um, I'm not a, uh, I'm not 100% sure why, but you know, it's Florida, and it could be any many different reasons why we know the the owner of this gun store and why he's so familiar to us. Well. It's a shitty story, and, and, and to hear that they had taken safety precautions, they had been there to learn how to shoot many times before. Um, if this went down the way it went down and the way I'm hearing, the gentleman shooting, a casing ricochets, comes back, goes down his shirt. Rather than put his gun down and retrieve the shell or get it off of him or whatever it needed to happen, he had the gun in his hand as he was trying to remove or get the shell off of his person. The gun discharged, i.e. his finger was still in the tr on the trigger, because that's the way guns go off, and it ricocheted off the ceiling and hit the child. And, and again, it, apparently it wasn't just the older brother. Apparently there was another sibling there that saw this happen. Um, from there, I have no information on how he was treated immediately, how severe the wound was. Was it an instant death? Did they have time to try to save them? Was there medical in the building? Was it administered by, uh, immediately? We don't have any he was, detail. He was hit in the neck. He was hit in the neck. He was hit in the neck. And um, 
I'm, you know, when I when I think about stuff like that, I can't help but think that something major was hit, and there's not much that someone without any training or any experience in the right equipment would have been able to do. So, you know, again, more speculation, but I do know he was hit in the neck. Or even someone with a lot of training. I mean, Caleb, someone gets hit in the neck. That's pretty damn serious. In I general. can't be. Yeah, I mean, the necks, you know, you've got some major arteries running up on the left and right side there. Uh, the spinal cord. Uh, it, you have some, some serious anatomical features there. Uh, but uh, it's, like y'all are saying, it's a lot of speculation. We don't know exactly what the hits were. I mean, or how, you know, where the projectile, the bullet itself entered the, the body of the neck, um, the trajectory of it, if I'm saying that word right, uh, that could have a lot to do with it too. Um, neck wounds are rather delicate. Uh, it kind of goes back to, you know, like what we've all said is, okay, we're at a, you know, think about it, we're at a shooting range. Um, firearms, they're, you know, they're objects. Like you said, the finger was on the trigger. The gun didn't just automatically go off. They don't do that, right? Um, so, it, we take the risk, you know, we do risk assessments, we're at the range, but uh, how many of us, uh, all of us, have been at the range where we've seen injuries, minor or moderate or severe? Uh, and who's carrying, you know, not, I'm not trying to promote here Caleb Alone's paramedics, I'm trying to promote, hey, let's let's really put our you know, heads together here, and why aren't we doing this, carrying med gear, med gear with us at the range? Not in our vehicle, not in our range bag 10 feet behind us, but shouldn't we already have medical gear on us as part of our everyday carry? So if we're standing there in our jeans and t-shirt at the range, we've got some, and then we've got some on our range bag, or we have a med kit specifically designed for us shooting at the range that we wear on our body. You know, we have ear pro and eye pro. Well, why not some life pro? Well said, and 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 Caleb, I don't know if you if you get it, if you had a chance to watch the show in the last couple of weeks. We've been talking about medical on the regular, about all of these crazy situations, the terrorist attacks, the different things, and if you're not a gun person, what can you do? All of those types of things. We've all committed to, uh, I've committed, and I think the other guys are already pretty much ahead of me on this, um, but to make sure that medical is a big part of everything I'm doing. Been carrying medical in a bag, just your basic stuff, um, but I'm a big proponent of what you're saying, and what you're saying makes sense, a lot a lot of sense. I have jotted down here um, just a couple things that I've seen in, in at certain times at certain ranges with, where I've had my kids with me, and... I'm very adamant about them being in the range where the bulletproof stuff is, staying in between there while they're at a public range. I try to go when there's not too many people, but a lot of times if you're going to get trigger time in, there's going to be people there. Sure. And um, I have seriously considered in the past getting some 3A uh, lightweight um, protection for my body, for my, the bodies of my children that are with me if we're at the range shooting and, and, and there's a chance that something could happen. I have a question in regard to this subject matter, Caleb. Um, those of us, we take classes, we do things. We haven't taken any classes that uh, focus primarily on first aid and aid in general. Not yet, at least. I haven't taken anything outside of the military. A first aid kit, the kid, the uh, IFAT kits and the kids that you guys talk to, that you talk about, the, the professionals, those are not what we're seeing when we're walking through Walmart, when we go to Sam's Club, or when we go to, to Publix and we see those first aid kits, you know, it's $20, $30 kits. It has some bandaging, some tape, and some, some stuff. But first aid is not what we are looking for when we're talking about this kind of stuff, is it? You're correct. Uh, the, the term, I, uh, people ask, you know, they say, well, Caleb, what is your, you know, I tell them what I do. Well, I teach uh, field and tactical medicine. And they said, oh, okay, well, What's that? And I said, think of it as like first aid on steroids. Okay, I don't teach what we call in the, you know, what I call boo-boo kits. You know, you're, you know, what you, you know, like you said, we, we don't walk through uh, your local sporting goods place or, uh, you know, Wally World and aisle three on the, in the pharmacy area and find a, a med kit or a field medicine kit or a tactical medical kit. We see what you said, like just what you said, first aid kit. Where they're going to have band-aids and boo-boo stuff, neosporin. They'll have some little gauze pads in there for very minor, you know, for cuts and bruises type stuff. But for ma major bleeding, whether we're talking car wrecks, gunshot wounds, or stabs, or you, you trip and fall, <laughs> carry your groceries in from the grocery store, you know, on the stairwell. You know, uh, those are the type of injuries. Immediate life-threatening injuries is what we're concerned about, not necessarily our booboo kits. 
Got it. Gotcha. You fall at the park. Fall at the park. First aid is what I call that. Right. Can can now let's say that that's what you have. Can someone with the knowledge, let's say Caleb comes across a car accident, or Caleb's at the range with Schwell, and Schwell chops his, his finger off or does something and ends up hurt, and all Caleb has access to is is, a, is one of those uh, standard first aid kits. Does the knowledge kind of uh, offset the lack of equipment? I wouldn't say offset. The knowledge is definitely, I would say, key. Uh, there's a reason that you know, I've, I've started my company not to sell products. I started my company to sell knowledge, if you will. And that sounds kind of cliche. Um, and, oh, yeah, any guy that runs his own company is going to say, well, no, that's really what we do. Uh, you can ask people, that, you know, how come you don't sell kits? You need to sell first aid kits. And I'm like, no, uh, retail side of the business is a completely different beast, uh, and it's a lot more difficult. But uh, it's the knowledge. So, yes, if you have a basic understanding of anatomy and physiology, and I'm talking basic. I'm not talking... EMT paramedic level. I'm talking about similar to what our course is, and I don't care if folks take a lens paramedics class or somebody else's, my competitors, i.e. my colleagues' classes, um, but get the, the training, the education, well, then you know how, hey, I can use that guy's sock or a handful of dirt to control the bleeding out of their thigh, you know, or, hey, I can improvise some stuff. If you have to, now I'm, I'm a strong advocate about not planning to improvise, so don't, don't miss, you know, uh, quote me on that. Or let me be let that be misleading, but uh, yeah, you definitely have to have you know tourniquets, pressure bandages, uh, hemostatic agents, uh, you know chest seals, that that level of stuff. You know, I'm gonna not, start not wearing my battle belt. I'm gonna start wearing my battle belt to the range with the med kit on it. Now that you've mentioned exactly what you just said, because you're absolutely right to have it to have it right on you versus in the bag behind you or ten feet or twenty feet. Something could make a difference. I agree. I thought Kevin the Tag Daddy always left the house with his battle belt on. Hey, hey, days. full kid or nothing, full kid or nothing. <laughs> it's the Tag well, Daddy belt. The, it's not a battle belt. It's the Tag Daddy belt. Come on, we we know what it's called. Well, then that's what I I try to tell people. It's like, hey guys, think of uh, uh, your med gear or like is at least a tourniquet or a hemostatic agent like quick clot combat gauze or a chest. You know, think of those hemorrhage control things uh, tools, uh, just like your defensive firearm. You know, well, all of us, you know, hopefully all of us do, carry concealed. Okay, well, you, when you leave the house, you don't carry, keep your, your defensive firearm in your truck, do you? Well, no. Okay. Why would you do that with your medical gear? Why would you do that with your tourniquet? So think of your tourniquet and your medical kit, your EDC med gear, just the same way you do your, your defensive firearm. You know, you don't carry your defensive firearm with the, the, little, the bullets, you know, the loose rounds in your pocket and uh, the magazine stored in another pouch and... Uh, the gun empty, no. You gas it up and charge it up. Do the same with your tourniquet. Take it out of the plastic wrapper. Take the rubber bands off it. Prepare it for one-handed use ap application. You know, something about tourniquets you brought up is it, um, you're speaking of tourniquets, is they're one-time use applications. I know people that buy them will sometimes train with them. Um, I've told people that I work with that they should buy a second one for training or buy a trainer tourniquet. Um, I think a lot of people assume that tourniquets can be like, you know, 1,001 uses. You can use it multiple times, you know, for training, and then if something does happen, you can then slap that thing on. But at that point, that tourniquet now has become slightly compromised. I'm, do you have any thoughts on using a training tourniquet? For I'm a huge advocate for folks using a designated tourniquet for training only. Uh, we I, Not to be too, uh, put, to put a feather in my own cap, uh, but I, we did an article with a Personal Defense Network uh, debunking that myth, or not, de not myth, but not debunking it, but just talking about uh, what a dude. problem is using those things. Is that that pinkest dude? <laughs> yeah, that's Rob. That's, that's Rob and a bunch of other contributors, You're too. Of show. We're kidding. We're just joking. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, and, it's, and what we found out uh, actually had, a, had tourniquets fail, and uh, I'm a big fan of uh, soft T-wides and cats. The compil application tourniquet. Uh, those two and those two alone. Um, they're, they're, you know, when someone can show me one that matches those, then I'll pay attention. But uh, we even had a soft T wide, uh, and cats fail through through training, you know. But these things are designed for one time use only, and uh, we figured the, the way the way it failed, and I'm not going to regurgitate the entire article, uh, but a small but a stitching came loose just because it was overused. And talking with the owner of TacMed Solutions, the people that make the soft T wide. Uh, he and I kind of came up with a 
ballpark a very, very rough estimate because I don't keep track of, I've got over, you know, 30 tourniquets and I have a classroom of 15 students uh, practicing skills practice. I don't know how many times in a one-day class on live people and a mannequin. And uh, I have no idea how long that one particular tourniquet was used, but we ballpark estimate over 200 to 250 times within about a six-month uh, time period. Uh, and for it to last that long, we were kind of impressed with it. He was impressed with this, with this product, but it was never designed to do that. So, yes, short short answer is definitely get a, your real-world tourniquet. Leave it for real-world. Um, you know, open it up, look at it, you know, try it on, you know, make sure, okay, go, you know, inspect it, make sure it works. But I wouldn't, you know, practice with it more than ten times. You know, that's uh, great. Get a training tourniquet. This is why we have people like you on. I learned something tonight, so that's that's fantastic information to have. Appreciate it. Sure. Appreciate it. Never never would have thought that. You know that at some point, you know there's a there's a breaking point on even things like tourniquets. But yeah, I, I get it. And Schwell, you got your you got your wrapper off. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping nobody noticed, but you know, <laughs> thanks for throwing me under the bus, the tourniquet bus. Well, the other thing, the other stories we wanted to cover tonight, um, real quick. It's getting late. I didn't realize already, but um, was um, there was there was other shootings that happened that didn't get any reporting on. Uh, there was a lot of shootings in in Chicago over the Fourth of July weekend, as usual. The number was down, but it was still a a number. Um, and Schwell, you mentioned one that that you wanted to cover about uh, the New York City one. Yes, sir. Um... It happened Sunday night, or sometime Monday, 4th of July weekend. Two vehicles, one cut one vehicle off, driver of vehicle two that was cut off, gets upset, jumps out of his car at a red light, and approaches the car of vehicle one that did the cutting off. Well, the driver of vehicle number one was an off-duty NYPD officer. The guy that got out of the car allegedly punched the police officer two times through the the driver's door. The police officer takes out his gun and puts rounds into the guy and, and kills him. And this is in Brooklyn, New York, this week. Um, we're not getting a lot of buzz on it. There was no huge coverage of it. I've only seen a couple of stories that address it, but it was this week. It was in 2016. What they are not doing is they're not posting any pictures of the officer. And something tells me that this does not fit the racial divide. So that's why it's not being run on mainstream media right now. You're saying that you're saying that you think the officer was black, right? I believe the officer was black, and that's why we're not seeing it being paraded all over the screen this week. You know, and um, I I find it very odd. And you know, there's been talk in the in the Gun Channel's chat. For those of you that don't know, that's Gun Channel's forward slash Gun News Weekly. They've been talking about how things started at about 6 p.m. tonight in New York City where things are starting to get ugly in New York. And it Already. was only a matter of time because, let's face it, they're coming home from work or whatever. They're just finding out about another shooting. So you got the shooting in New York, shooting in it's Baton also, Rouge, shooting in It's Minnesota. also summer. It's summer. Kids are out of school. Kids are out of school. Right. It's hot. It's also hot. That's, you know. That I said that these things, they usually transfer over around 10 o'clock, 10.30 at night. The people that got off work, went to happy hour, decided to go protest. They're all going home, going to bed because they got work tomorrow. All the kids have been home hanging out all day, went out after dinner time, hanging out with their buddies. We might as well go down there. Now that now you're going to see the trouble. It's sad, but that's the formula. That's what happens time after time. Um, what else do we got? You said there was one more shooting. Was there another shooting in New York? Oh, the New York and, and the, the sad one in the in the range. Oh, okay, gotcha. gotcha. There, there is there is a gun. Uh, there is a question in chat uh, for Caleb if we have time. Go right ahead. So, uh, Caleb, one of the uh, uh, Wayne in our chat is asking about classes. Um, do you have a recommendation for classes? Of you know um, yourself and um, any. Like, what would be a basics to carry for an EDC med kit? Uh, as far as the classes, uh, just like anything else, just like if you're, you know, defensive firearms training, you know, seek out what, you know, for those instructors and those companies that offer applicable uh, medical training to what you're, for what you're wanting to do. Uh, you know, there's, the, the market's flooded with uh, good, strong uh, instructors that are teaching a lot of good medicine. 
but the key word is applicability. Uh, everybody's quick to say, hey, I learned tactical medicine. Okay, well, how many gunfights were you involved with this last year? None. Okay, well, how many car wrecks were you? did you see on your way to work this morning? Oh, a dozen. Okay, well, let's make it applicable then. Uh, yeah, it's cool to talk about gunshot wounds, but those are, you know, fairly easy to, you know, <laughs> to deal with. Uh, but, uh, you know, Lone Star Medics, we've got classes. Uh, that's why we have, like you guys said, our uh, lineup uh, is pretty elaborate. Uh, we've got over 37, I think, at the last count, last month. Uh, 37 different courses, depending on who you are, what you want to learn. But, uh, again, I would say for training, yeah, a basic class, a one, a one day, a full eight hours, preferably. Um, and then take from other instructors. Like I said, there's plenty of other guys out there and girls that are teaching uh, that are technically my competitors, but we all know each other <laughs> and they're colleagues. So I encourage my students, hey, when you're done with my class, go take everybody else's class too. You're going to learn how to skin that cat different ways. Uh, as far as carrying medical gear uh, as your part of your everyday carry, uh, first thing is you want to think of it instead of uh, treating, you know, what kind of gear should I get, uh, what is the end result, what am I wanting to do? And then we'll pick out the tools for that. Uh, so first thing is do uh, is uh, hemorrhaging, but basically bleeding out. We don't want to bleed out anywhere. We want to keep the blood inside the body. It's where it belongs. Um, we want to keep it there. So we're looking at things like a tourniquet, a soft T wide or a cat. We need to get one of those. Um, but think of it, you know, keep the, one of those as part of your everyday carry. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, a hemostatic agent. Might not be such a bad idea or a hemostatic adjunct. Um, so we're looking at quick clock combat gauze, uh, Cellox rapid, stuff like that. Uh, then definitely, well, if you've got holes anywhere in the rib cage, for the most part, well, we don't, we don't, our bodies don't like holes in our rib cage. So we've got to, you know, plug those up with giant stickers, if you will. We call them chest seals. But they're giant stickers, okay? They're really cool stickers. They're expensive stickers. Um, and uh, someday they'll actually start drawing some smiley faces on them, too, just to be funny. But uh, those, those in, three items right there can cover a lot. Those don't come in the basic packs. You've got to search those out, correct? Uh, depends. on the, If you get companies, uh, there are several companies that make these kits now. Uh, right. Places like uh, Tactical Medical Solutions, uh, ITS Tactical. Um, those are the two just off, off the top of my head. Um, that, got it. You know, got different kits for that. Obviously, it's not something we're going to find, you know, at our you know local pharmacy or anything yet. We're hopeful. Hopefully, we will. Uh, but uh, those would be two places I would start. Uh, they've both got quality equipment and gear that they sell. Uh, there's more I could look up and cool. I can send you guys links for them. You guys can share them with folks. Caleb, I'm scheduled to get a, a, a personalized class with the family very soon. I know Schwell is committed to do the same. Eric, you should do as well. But we're going to have you back because I think we need to have a, a, a class dedicated to a little bit more. Now that you got those little pieces of equipment, what can you do with them? What are the basics? What you know? Again, help ed educate some of the audience that won't be able to go to a class, but at least, like I've always said, I've got all my equipment. Worst case, I can be on scene and say I know how to do a little bit. Who else has education? I've got the tools. At least I've sure. got something with me. Um, it's a good place to start, I've always said. Um, but now we're trying to take that next step. And uh, we appreciate you coming on tonight and helping us and educating us along with these, uh, along the way with the stories. Definitely appreciate Guys, thank you. Thank you guys very much for having me out. This has been cool. And once again, everyone can find him right now, LoneStarMedics.com. I checked it at the website uh, earlier and then later in the day as well. Make sure you check it out. If you're, if you're close there, if you're in Texas, go take a class. Go have some fun. Tell Caleb you saw him on Gun News Weekly. And uh, he'll probably smile. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, I also wanted to shout out Mid Midwest Industries. It's been a minute. We haven't had time for tech time in quite some time on the show. But if you need accessories, like, again, just simple things, QD adapters, rail, uh, adapters for your rails, different kinds of rails. Um, I'm a big proponent of their 308 rifle. I know Schwell loves their rails. The other cool things that they have over at Midwest Industries is things like uh, for guys that are making videos, you want attachments for your... Um, M-Lock or key mod um, rails, you can have your uh, your GoPros right on there, that kind of fun stuff. So I haven't talked about Midwest in a while, so I figured I'd bring them up tonight again. Um, and that's it. Check out TechDaddy.com. We've got a bunch of cool things on sale, including the boots from Garmont. And uh, check out EverydayCarryLife.com when you get a chance. The new tandem holsters from Nate Squared Tactical are legit. Well, I might even let you take one home and play with it for a little bit because I think, honestly... I think you might like this one different than the professional one. I saw your video. Uh, I think it was a live Facebook video you did, and uh, I am interested in seeing how thick it, it is with the, the new dual layer or triple layer 
that they have. It's a, it's a good one. I'm telling you, it's 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 a good one. So uh, anyway, check out all that stuff at TacDaddy.com. Check out us and all of our guests and hosts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Obviously, shout out to Ross, Casey. Hope you feel better, brother. Q, next week, we'll make something happen. And uh, thanks again to Frank and everybody that supported us along the way. And uh, thanks to Mama Tack. It's been a while since I've addressed her and said thanks. So I appreciate you letting us do what we do every Thursday night, getting loud. And uh, it's 10.02. Hope everybody's safe. Hope everyone has a good one. Shwell, we'll talk to you next week, bro. Maybe. Maybe. We're going to see you next week. We might even have to do some live Facebook stuff like we're friends or something. That all depends on whether or not Eric gives me permission to come and hang out with you. Because, you know, we're, we're working oh, you on always some got, stuff. You're you always got it. permission. Yeah. You always got permission. <laughs> oh, he's got the, got, the, got the permission. All right, Eric. Appreciate it, brother. We'll talk to you next time. Sounds good, man. Have a good one. Cool. Appreciate it. Caleb, once again, thanks again. We appreciate you jumping on. It was great to have you. I'll see you guys. Later, bro. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Peace.